following my channel for a while it is no surprise to you that the Leica Q2 is my favorite camera of all time. Over the last three years I shot thousands of photos with this camera not just some of my professional work but some of my most cherished personal photos like the birth of my son. So this is my review of what it's like to shoot with the Leica Q2 over the last three years. Leica as a brand has been making cameras for a long time starting with like their more popular film cameras like the Leica M6 to their more popular Leica M11 counterparts. I just came out last year with the M11 and the M11 monochrome. So I was really curious what other people's experiences with Leica cameras were. So I reached out to a bunch of photographers on threads and I wanted to get everybody's feedback because everybody's photography journey is a little bit different. So I got a bunch of responses from different types of photographers and everybody seems to kind of have a consensus on why they shoot with Leica. And that is that they just love the shooting experience. The reason I shoot Leica is because of the versatility that it gives me. I don't feel like I'm limited in any way when I'm shooting with the M10. I feel like with me, my style is always changing. Um, my colors that I'm using are always changing. So it's nice to have a camera that can keep up with that. Um, and really, I just don't crave another camera when I'm using it. So that's been nice. You know, I try to stay away from the gear reviews and everything. Um, you know, it's it's just nice to have a camera that I want and that I am so comfortable using. The M2 was one of the very first cameras that I learned how to shoot film on, how I learned to photograph and just document my life and my family on. And just through that experience of using that camera and many of the other Leica models throughout the year just helped me grow a deeper connection and meaning to what my life is and what my family's life and legacy is. There's definitely a conversation to be had on how expensive Leica cameras can be, even if you compare them to like Sony's or Canon's, Nikon's, Fujifilm. And I think it depends on the photographer and it's up to each photographer individually to ask themselves whether or not the price of Leica cameras is worth it to them because everybody's experience is a little bit different. So today I'm not going to talk so much about specs because I already reviewed that in my one year review, but I will kind of hit certain points on what I think is really interesting about the Leica Q2. And if you're curious on shooting with this camera, what you should look out for. So what originally drew me to this camera was the build quality and just the overall design of the Leica Q system. I originally shot with this camera in um, September of 2020 when my wife rented it for my 30th birthday. And uh, a month went by and I saw one go for sale on B&H that was used. And so I got it $1,000 off and it looked pretty brand new so I had to pull the trigger on it and I'm glad I did because it was basically brand new when I bought it and this is what three years of use looks like on the like a Q system and I don't really uh, baby my cameras I like to use my camera so for instance um, I bump into this hood all the time so you know um, I'm trying to see if you can see there's like a little bit of scratches on, on the lens hood because of the times I bump into it when I'm out walking around or if I'm using this at a wedding and um, at weddings I tend to be a little more clumsy with my stuff so um, this hood has really saved the lens pretty well. The lens of this camera is really beautiful and with the lens hood I think it really adds a lot to the charm of the Leica Q cameras. So yeah, I never replaced the hood. This is the original foot hood that it came with. And um, although it's a little bumped up, I think it still does the job and it adds a lot of character to the camera. As far as the body, it's pretty intact. There's a bunch of little uh, surface scratches, some of the paint rubbed off over here. But overall, the, the camera has held up really well, um, even down to, to here where most of the wear and tear goes because I set my camera down places. Um, this is still the original 
camera strap that it came with, which I really like. I've tried other camera straps and this just always always on my camera. And uh, it's apart from the Clever Supply short strap that I sometimes put on this, if I'm using this camera with other cameras at the same time. But overall, I just love the way that this camera, I never had to do anything to the camera. So when I bought it, when I buy cameras, I usually put a different strap on it, but for this one, I just kept the original Leica strap and I actually want to get a new one because this one is kind of showing its age a little bit more just simply because I use it all the time. I think if you're looking into this camera, one of the big draw factors is this 28 millimeter f1.7 lens. And it's not a lens that you can actually purchase separately. And if you're looking at a 28 millimeter lens for uh, from Leica, you're looking at like $7,000. Right now with the Leica Q2 system, uh, this camera, if you buy it brand new, it's still $5,500. But if you compare it to the, just the cost of the lens that they sell separately, you're getting a camera body included. So I know it's still a, a big chunk of change or, a big amount to pay for a camera but if you're looking just as comparing comparing the actual prices of the lens versus this camera you're actually getting a, a camera body with the lens which is something i really it, it really attracted me in the first place when i started shooting with this camera i wasn't super super familiar with 28 millimeters but if you followed my work at all you know that 28 millimeters is my favorite focal length now because of how much i actually shoot with this camera so the 28 millimeter as you can see it's a fixed focal length on the Leica Q2. I also shoot with a Ricoh GR3. And whenever I get a camera, I try to get the 28 millimeter equivalent if I can do it. Uh, one thing to note about this lens, it says it's a 28, but it's more like a 27, 26. But I am so used to composing with this. It doesn't really bother me at all. I have actually prefer to shoot with this lens because of how beautiful the colors render in this camera. It's, it's just something that I've grown to really love. Um, and it's something that I think helped me grow with my photography, just seeing things in a different way that's just a 35 or a 50 millimeter. Shooting a wide, more of a wide aspect ratio for me um, it has really showed me where my comfort level is at and where I like to shoot. And I like to shoot a lot of uh, landscapes and whenever I shoot, um, I don't do a lot of street photography, but when I do street photography, esque things when I'm at the theme parks or anything like that. I like to shoot pretty wide just because I like to um, take pictures of scenes and not so much of people. So um, I do like to have people in my photos if I'm doing my personal stuff, but I, I generally try to stay back as much as possible just to keep the integrity of a scene. And I think that just uh, helps helps me with this camera because it just allows me to, to shoot in the, the way that I like to shoot. One thing about this lens that I really like is just how many physical controls it has. You can change your f-stop right onto the lens. You can go into macro mode. This lens also has a macro mode. I don't do a lot of macro photography, but I do like that it's there for times that I just want to experiment. And on top of that, you can also go into full manual mode by pressing this button at the back of the lens. If you're not super familiar with this camera, it's, it's a little bit hard to get used to in the beginning, but once you know where it is, it kind of becomes second nature to you. So there's this button that you press and it goes right into manual focus. And it, it's really easy to manually focus with this camera, which is something I'm really thankful for because I've gotten a little bit better at manually focusing with the camera, which I was not very comfortable with. Even though this camera is focused by wire, it's one of the most smooth lenses I've ever shot with if I'm trying to do very precise movements with the camera. So um, as you can see on the top of this camera, it has a focusing scale. You can see all the different distances right here. And if you go into macro mode, it does change right on the lens. So it's something I really like. This camera is super tactile and um, easy to shoot in manual mode if you want to, but if you want to go into fully automatic, you can do it right from all the different dials here. Uh, so right on the lens and then your shutter speed, you can lock it in. And then um, this custom button up here in the back of the, the camera, you can also set it to your shutter speed, I mean your ISO. So I that's what I have my camera set to, just ISO. So it's easy to, to switch back and forth. So yeah, I, I'm, I really like that this camera just kind of feels like the back of my hand. I'm really familiar with it after shooting with it for so long. It doesn't have tons of buttons, but the buttons are in familiar places. So um, I think with any camera, honestly, if you are really familiar with it and if you don't super customize it all the time, it just kind of becomes second nature. But I love the fact that there's so many minimal controls in this camera because I tend to be paralyzed with options and I tend to like fiddle with things all the time. So. 
Um, if you're like me, um, having a kind of a set system is really useful, especially because it's so simple to use. So once you know where one thing is, you know where everything is. And again, if you like to fully customize your cameras, this might not be your best bet, but a couple of the buttons that it does have, you have some options to customize it. So it has the function button back here that you can full press. It takes you to this menu where you can set your exposure, the timer, white balance, fo photo file format, scene mode. So all these different settings you can set your function button to. I have it set to white balance. So when I press it once, it goes to white balance. I don't usually go with automatic all the time, but I, I like the fact that I can go from color temperature to cloudy and daylight. So that's usually where I have my function button set to. And then you, have also, you can also customize other buttons, not as fully as your function button, but it's there. Speaking of all the different buttons, this button up here, is a, a crop mode that you can use if you like to shoot in JPEG plus RAW. So if you shoot in JPEG plus RAW, you can actually crop into a 35 millimeter focal length or a 50 or a 75. Obviously, you're not going to get those, that compression you get with different focal lengths. But if you like to compose with a 35 or a 50 or a 75, um, you can do that right in camera so you don't have to crop it in post. But if you're someone who's like me, who's kind of indecisive, you can both crop in in camera for the jpeg but you will still have your full raw photo to play around with in lightroom or whatever you use to edit your photos one thing i really like about the q2 as well is the menu system it's super simple so if, if you press the menu button once it takes you to this um, menu system right here that you can sh change a couple of different settings on the fly but if you want to get to the rest of your settings you have to press it another, uh, again and you can have your favorites in the first page where you can um, set to anything you want and you, you have all the different things that you can change in five other pages so it's super simple to get to everything pretty quickly and it's really easy to memorize all the different settings in the Leica Q2. One thing that Leica cameras don't have that other cameras have is picture profiles so whenever you shoot in JPEG the there's only a couple of different options to kind of play around with your JPEG looks that you have a standard look a vivid and natural, a black and white natural, and a black and white high contrast option. I honestly don't shoot with a lot of different options besides the natural look. If I'm just shooting JPEG plus raw and I like to give my family photos without having to edit them, the natural look gives you a really pleasing skin tone, which is what I'm looking out for whenever I'm shooting this in JPEG. So it's really useful to have something that's pretty uh, pleasing looking right in camera. It's not, obviously it's not very customizable, but I like the way that it looks. But honestly, my favorite way to shoot with the Leica Q2 is shooting it in monochrome. So I set my in-camera look to black and white natural and I have it set to JPEG plus RAW. So whenever I'm looking in the back of the camera, I'm shooting in black and white. But when I have my full resolution uh, RAW files, I, I have that in color. So I get the best of, best of both worlds. And it's something that I really like to play around with just so I can uh, look at scenes a different way or look for contrast and shadows So it's a really useful way for me to play around with my camera when it comes to the EVF and the screen in this camera It's definitely usable for a camera that came out in 2019. It's pretty bright. It's pretty big Especially for me who wears glasses. It could be better I know a lot of more modern cameras have a bigger pixel density on their EVFs and um, but with the cameras that I currently use, I'm using an a7 IV to shoot this video and it's my main uh, photo and video camera for when I do shoots. And the EVF in those cameras don't compare to this, even though uh, the Sony a7 IV is newer. I prefer shooting with the Leica Q2 EVF because it's pretty um, color accurate and it's bright enough for me. And the back panel is also really nice. So it's definitely usable in bright sunlights. It definitely could be a lot better, but um, it's not something that bothers me all that much and it's definitely better than other cameras in the competition. What I really like about this camera is that Leica still does firmware updates pretty regularly. Last year they added highlight weighted metering. This year they added uh, uh, face tracking for their autofocus. You're still, it's still contrast-based autofocus, but I like the fact that Leica is still trying to improve on the firmware in these cameras and not just abandoning them after they release a new camera. My biggest gripe with this camera is that there's no way to charge the, the battery in camera, which for modern cameras seems a little like an oversight. I know that they changed it with like a Q3, which is something that uh, is really appealing. Uh, I don't have the money to drop to buy a Q3, but I like that they changed that in the newer model. So if you can see, there's no way to charge the battery in this camera. 
And when I originally reviewed the camera in 2021, I said that the battery life was pretty good and it's still, I think it's okay. It's not too, too bad, but I, it definitely could be better. And I know they increase the amount of photos you can get with the Leica Q3. So if you are out shooting photos and you happen to forget your charger, like I did in the last trip I did, I had, I went on a trip with one battery that was charged at 75%. So I had to stretch it out for the, for a day and a half, which ended up working out, but cause I didn't take a lot of photos. But um, if you're out shooting all day, you're gonna have to invest in a couple of batteries. The Leica Q2 batteries, they're notorious to be for being very expensive. With the Leica Q3, they came out with a new battery that actually fits the Leica Q2 that's bigger um, in capacity. So I haven't tried it out. I know that they fit. I don't know how many more photos you can get with those new batteries. Um, so I would try that out if I were you, if you have the Leica Q2. Uh, each one of these older batteries were $270, which is a lot of money. The new batteries, I believe they're around 170 up put it on the screen. So if you're shooting with this camera, you have to make sure that it's fully charged before you leave the house because there's no way to charge it in camera. Another con with this camera is more of a nitpick because I tend to work around it anyway, is that the auto white balance is not super accurate. So if you wanna really treat this camera like a point and shoot, um, you will have to set your white balance yourself. But if you're out shooting in places that have like mixed lighting, like a tungsten or you're indoors and you go outdoors, the camera is not super reliable with that. So if you tend to set your white balance you're on your own, it's not really a big deal. But if you're looking for this camera and auto white balance, something you want to rely on, I wouldn't rely on it unless you're shooting in RAW. Another con, if you're looking to pick this camera up, if you have never shot with a Leica Q camera, is the lack of like a grip. I have relatively small hands, so it doesn't bother me too much, especially with the thumb grip that I added a few years ago. It really adds on to the usability of this camera. So if you're used to like a grip to hold onto your cameras, this camera doesn't really have one at all. So you're kind of stuck with, um, you know, the, the design of this body. So if you don't have a thumb rest, you kind of have to hold your camera like this. And for short periods of time, it's not, it's not very uncomfortable, honestly, but if you have bigger hands, I can see where that could be an issue. So you definitely would have to add a couple of accessories to add to the grippability of the camera. So that's something to look out for. One thing that's changed in the camera space over the last couple of years is cameras, full frame cameras are getting smaller and smaller. When I bought this camera, it's one of the smallest full frame cameras you can buy, but other, the competition's kind of inching into that space, which I kind of like because it just gives you more variety and more options if you're looking to buy this type of style of camera. So this is like range finder style camera, which is something I gravitate to. Um, you know, I, one of the things I really like about the camera, as I said, is the design, but there's other cameras out on the market now that are full frame that have other options if you're looking um, out to shoot with, to have a similar shooting experience. So for instance, Sony now has the a7C II. They released the Sony a7C in 2020, I believe. And this is the latest iteration of this camera, which um, if you compare it size wise, it's pretty comparable in size. Uh, if you look at the Sony, it has the actual grip on it. If you are looking for a camera that has a little bit more grip to it, and they're both full frames. Honestly, the Leica Q2 is a little bit taller than the Sony camera. So if the shooting experience, you want something like a Leica shooting experience, the rangefinder styles, there are other options now that are not just APS-C. And if you're just looking for that styling of the camera, um, you might like the Sony a7C II, especially if you shoot a lot of video. Um, this is a great hybrid camera. You get the flippy screen if you wanna film yourself, if you're shooting videos or if you're taking family photos. Another thing the a7C II has that the Leica Q2 doesn't is that fact that you can in change lenses. So there's an uh, interchangeable lens camera, which is really useful if you wanna just pick up one camera up and not have to have just the one focal length. Sony has now released a couple of small primes, the 24, 40 millimeter, and a 50 millimeter, if I'm correct. They're all uh, relatively small cameras. So if you're kind of looking for something that gives you a similar shooting experience, you can find it with a7C II. And if you're a hybrid shooter, you also get a really good video features and a flippy screen. So there's a lot of reasons to pick up a Sony versus like a Leica or a Fujifilm. The point is there's so many options out there now that we're really spoiled as photographers. So if you don't wanna buy a Leica, Sony has uh, a, a, an alternative and so does Fujifilm. Fujifilm was making cameras in a range finder style for a very long time. So um, 
don't think that I'm trying to sell you a Leica Q2 or that I'm saying like the Leica Q2 makes you a better photographer because um, it's all about the photographer and the, and the way that I like to shoot. It's about, I find a lot of importance on shooting experience and I really like the way that, and not just the way the camera looks, but the way that I'm, I'm shooting with this camera. It's super comfortable to me. So finding a camera that does that for you is really important. So if it is a Sony a7C2 or a Fujifilm X100V or a Ricoh GR3, there's so many options out there that I think if you're looking for a very specific camera, you're more um, likely to find it these days. And I think that's great. I wanna give a special thank you to all the photographers that contributed to the making of this video, all the photography community on threads and both my friends, Eddie G and um, Eddie Grog, who um, sent in those awesome audio clips and all of their work. So if you're interested in the work on any photographer you saw today, all of them are listed in the description down below. And if you are on threads, please give everybody a follow. And if you're not subscribed to Eddie's channel or you follow Eddie on um, Instagram, please give him a follow because they're all very talented photographers. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. If there's something I didn't cover with like a Q2 and you have any more questions, please leave me in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you next time. Bye.